In this lesson, we'll take a look at Interface Builder. Interface Builder is a component of Xcode used to build and manage your app's user interface. Interface Builder often presents a stumbling block for new developers as some of its concepts don't immediately click with everyone. But once you wrap your head around it, I think you'll be very impressed by how quickly and easily you can build iOS user interfaces. Interface Builder used to be a separate, standalone application, and you would toggle back and forth between Xcode and Interface Builder as you were building your app. But starting in Xcode 4, Apple integrated its functionality directly within Xcode, which provides for a better, more streamlined workflow. Now, Interface Builder resources are stored in a file called a nib. If you expand the resources group, you'll see a variety of these files. Now, you may be wondering why I'm referring to these as nib files, as they have this .xib extension. Well, like many things in the iOS technology stack, Interface Builder originated with a company called Next. And this acronym NIB stands for Next Interface Builder. So why did these have a .xib extension? NIB files are binary files, but the files we actually work with from within Xcode are stored as XML. So XIB is the XML version of an Interface Builder file. Let's go and open up the Toolbar View Controller. So simply select that and that will open up Interface Builder. Now this area on the left with the three icons is called the Dock. This is currently the collapsed view of the dock, but you can also expand it by clicking this arrow at the bottom of the screen. And this is really my preferred view as it's much easier to visualize and navigate the contents of this nib. Now we have two sections. We have this placeholder section and an object section. Let's discuss the placeholders first of all. Now the placeholders are often confusing when you're starting out. I know it certainly was for me, but it's really just a matter of getting familiar with some Apple terminology. The file's owner is the object that owns this nib. Every nib file is owned by an object, and this is usually the object that is responsible for loading this nib file at runtime. Most frequently within an iOS app, this object is a view controller. But this object provides a proxy reference back to the owner so that as you need to make connections between your source code and your UI, you can do so through the file's owner reference. For instance, our view controller often needs to know about the various components within this nib file. So let me just reposition this view a little bit. And if I hold down the control key and then click and drag, as I highlight over these various components, you can see they highlight. And this allows me to make a connection from my source code into this nib file. Now likewise, we can also make connections from our nib back into our source file. So as a user interacts with a component, such as clicking on this segmented control, if I hold down the control key and drag back over to the file's owner, I'll see some various action methods that could possibly be invoked. Now the other placeholder we have is what's called the first responder. Apple's event model is built around this notion of a responder chain. So as user events are dispatched, a responder has the opportunity to respond or handle an event before this event gets bubbled up the chain. The first responder is the first link in that chain that has the opportunity to handle this event. Now in practice, you won't use this object very frequently. Of the two placeholders, the file's owner is the far more important object. Now below that we have the various objects that actually exist in this nib file. Our user interfaces are made up of hierarchies of different views and components. So this view allows me to navigate that hierarchy. As I highlight various items in this list, you'll see them highlight in the editor area as well. So this view provides me a convenient way to navigate the various components within this file. If I switch over to the editor area itself, you can see we can highlight various components. I can move these around. I can resize them. So this provides me a nice, easy way to lay out my user interface. And it very much is a what you see is what you get or WYSIWYG type of editing experience. I can also add new components. So down here in the bottom right corner, if I select the objects library, this will provide me a listing of all the various object types I can add to my nib. So if I wanted to add a label, for instance, I can simply drag and drop that into my canvas area. One thing you'll notice is as I move this component around, we get these blue guidelines that pop up. And these are based on Apple's human interface guidelines. So it provides you some hints as to where to best lay out your components. Now, if I switch to the utility area in the right-hand side of the screen, we'll see some similar things that we've already seen in previous videos. We have the file inspector, quick help inspector, identity inspector, but we also have a few additional ones that are unique to Interface Builder itself. So there's attributes, size, and connections. 
We'll look specifically at the Size and Attributes Inspector. So with the Size Inspector, I can very finely tune my user interface by adjusting the XY coordinates of a component or changing its width or its height. I can also adjust its auto sizing behavior. This is particularly important when you're developing iPad applications as it's expected that you generally support both orientations. So as the user switches from one orientation to the next, this will allow you to adjust how those components get relayed out on screen. So if you want components to stretch or reflow in a certain way, you can do that quite easily by adjusting these struts and springs that are available within the auto sizing inspector. Now if I switch to the attributes inspector, this allows me to adjust various attributes on a particular component. And you'll notice this is context sensitive, so as I switch components, we'll see different properties show up. But down here in my label, if I wanted to change this text and give this a label of username, we'll see this get adjusted and I can resize this component. We can change its font or its text color. If I highlight one of these switches, I can change its default state, so it's on or off change things like its tint color. So this provides me a real convenient way of manipulating the various components that I have within the user interface. Now we'll be using Interface Builder a lot throughout this course. And as we do, I'll show you how this tool fits into our development workflow and how to use this in conjunction with our source code. But certainly don't hesitate to experiment with this tool. Go ahead and add new components, change their attributes, and then rerun the app to see how these changes affect the app at runtime.